In this video I will show you how you can run winforms slash wpf.net applications in Linux on the Windows subsystem for Linux or WSL and how you can debug the application using Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code from the Windows host system. At the time of recording, running GUI apps on the Windows subsystem for Linux is available only in the preview version, but nevertheless it is a big step forward and in my opinion worth checking out. The application I have prepared in Visual Studio is a very basic winforms application with some data bindings, few event handlers, simple undo redo functionality and a message box showing the .NET version currently used and showing that it is running as a 64-bit process. It is built for .NET 4.5, an older framework version. Although you can develop and run .NET Core and .NET 5 applications natively in Linux, WinForms and WPF desktop applications are at the time of recording not supported in Linux. Nevertheless, I will show you how you can debug any .NET application, even the ones running older .NET framework versions like this one. The same application I can also build, run and debug in Visual Studio Code. Now let's run it in Linux. In order to run WinForms and WPF applications in Linux, we need to run them using Vine. For those of you not familiar what Vine is, it's a software that allows Windows applications to run on Linux. It's not an emulator, not a sandbox and not a virtualization software. It is a compatibility layer which translates Windows system calls to Linux system calls. That means that the Windows applications can run pretty much natively on Linux using Vine under the assumption that the compatibility layer maps the calls accurately. Without going into too much detail how Vine works and how to set it up properly, I will briefly walk you through the installation process here. If you already have Vine set up and you are only interested in the debugging part, then fast forward to a specific timestamp in the description. Let's install Wine here on this fresh Ubuntu WSL install. I'm already logged in with my user and this is the 20.04 version of Ubuntu with the 5.10 kernel. You can find the Wine installation commands in the description. First we will allow the installation of 32-bit packages. We want to install the latest stable Wine version which is the version 6 at the time of recording. According to the official Wine HQ instructions we need to download and add the Wine repository key and add the official repository. Now update the package list from the repositories and install Wine HQ stable. Let's check the version, 6 it is. Next step is to configure Vine by typing Vine CFG. It will prompt you to install Mono and Gecko. Depending on the apps you want to run in Vine, you will need those, so install both. Next we want to install Vine Tricks. This tool allows us to easily download and install additional Windows packages that some applications need, like the .NET framework in our case. My application is running an older .NET 4.5, so that's the one we need to install in Vine. Write winetricks.net 4.5 and one important thing before I start the installation, don't run winetricks and vine with sudo as root. It will not work. Hit enter and install. Follow the installation process. Of course you could also download the official .NET 4.5 installer and install it manually with Wine, but Wine Tricks will in addition install all the missing dependencies if there are any. If I run no Wine Tricks list dash installed, we can see the list of installed packages and .NET 4.0 was installed together with 4.5. Now before we start using Wine, run Wine CFG one more time and make sure that the Windows version compatibility is set to at least Windows 7. We have configured everything, so let's give our application a shot. Write Wine and navigate to the application folder. WSL mounts the Windows drives under slash mnt slash and the drive ladder. My application is on drive C, sources and mvc is the Visual Studio project folder where I built my application. Enter, let's try it out. Seems to work. The framework is also recognized and the process is running as a 32-bit process. If you run Wine64 instead, we get a 64-bit process. Before we can start debugging .NET applications on the Vine, we also need to run the debugger on the Vine. I'm not talking about the Visual Studio, but the debugger standalone application that comes with Visual Studio Code C# -sharp extension. It gets installed in your Windows user folder under .vs code extensions ms.net tools C# -sharp .debugger vs dbg .exe. Now copy the whole .debugger folder into your Ubuntu user home directory and I'll rename it to .vs-debugger. 
For convenience, we will also create a link under slash MNT with the same Windows Drive letter and a colon at the end, so we can also access the drive using that link. Let's debug the application with Visual Studio Code first, open the launch JSON configuration and here we will add another attached configuration. Instead of process ID, we will add the process name and we need a pipe transport here, because we cannot invoke the debugger directly. Pipe program is wsl.exe and the debugger path is the path to the previously copied debugger on Ubuntu that should run under Vine. Also make sure to remove the pipe arcs. Now open the CS project file and make sure to add debug type portable and enable debug symbols. Let's build, terminal, run build task, start application in Ubuntu and attach. Attaching was successful, those error from pipe program messages are the regular Vine output running the debugger that is cached here. We can see the symbols are loaded, Z drive is the way Vine sees the Ubuntu root folder and here is our mounted C drive. Let's make a breakpoint at the beginning of the undo handler, make a change, undo and we've hit the breakpoint. The full debug information is here with the call stack. We can step through the code, jump the cursor, add to watch, add conditional breakpoints and break on exceptions also works as expected. Let's now write a launch configuration, very similar, we need the pipe transport and for the program we need to tell the debugger that runs on the vine where the program can be found. Our application is not on this path in Linux but under Z, M and T, as we saw earlier. That's why we previously made the link for the C drive letter, so the rest of the path can fit in. It's the same with the working directory. The configuration is ready, but if you try to run it, unfortunately the debugger crashes. It might be a Vine issue and it turns out that it is .NET Framework related. I will switch the framework to a newer version, .NET 5.0-Windows. Also on Ubuntu we need to install .NET 5.0. Vine Tricks does not have this package yet, so let's download the official package ourselves and install it using Vine. Adjust the configuration to match the new build path and the type is CoreCLR now. If we try to launch, we see the debugger works with .NET 5. Let's try a breakpoint. It hits and we have again all the debug information. So much about debugging in Visual Studio Code, let's get over to Visual Studio. In order to debug in Visual Studio we need a similar JSON configuration file, I will create one here and paste the configurations in. As you can see it's very similar, instead of the pipe transport we have the adapter up here which launches the debugger in Linux using Vine. Let's give it a try, to launch it we need the command window, write debug adapter host dot launch slash launch json the path to the json file then slash configuration name and the configuration name dot net vine launch. Here it is, in the output window we see symbols are loaded, set some breakpoints and it breaks. The full debug information is here as well, stepping works, watch window, conditional breakpoints and break on exceptions also works as expected. Finally let's try the attach configuration, start application, attach with the same command, the configuration name is .NET Vine attach and we are indeed attached. So that's it for this video, thank you very much for watching, I hope you are excited about debugging Windows GUI application on Linux as much as I am, if you are, give a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one, also make sure to hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. See you in the next one, bye!